In this video, we're going to be creating some IP tables rules to create a firewall on some ports and see how Nmap can detect things and even figure out if there's a potential firewall in the way. How would you know? And I'll briefly cover some ways that you could bypass firewalls as well. Of course, it depends on how the firewall is configured as to what technique you use or if you're able to at all. So in this case here, we will, I mean, I have already created this, but it's a firewall script that just basically runs some IP tables commands. I'll step that, step through that with you guys right now. So hopefully, let me see here. Let me just exit out of this, make the, uh, make it bigger. I know you guys always say that, uh, can be kind of difficult to see. So hopefully that is nice and large for you guys. However, you may be viewing this video now over here The first thing that I'm gonna do I'm gonna flush all the existing IP tables I'm doing this just in case there's other IP table rules that we ran and that might be in effect and I'm just gonna completely uh, Just clear everything out. That's what these two commands are basically doing here and Once I have done that I'm gonna set some rules. I commented this out. We're gonna use this in a, in a minute to show you but the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to open up uh, a couple ports, 22 and 80. And I'm going to also set it up so that it will allow responses to outgoing TCP requests. So if I make a TCP request on port 22, port 80, um, then it should show that it's open. Now, here you see I actually open those ports as well using Netcat. So I have... Uh, in reality, I would have like a web server running here and an SSH server running here. But just as a way to demo this, I, I just opened up a Netcat session so we could see that they are open. Now, this is all pretty standard, right? Everything is checking out here. There's nothing nothing weird going on here, really. So if I ran Nmap, and for sake of time, I'll just scan those two ports on uh, my IP address. What we should see is that both of these ports are open. I'm not sure what's going on with this line here, why it's so out of sync. Oh, I guess maybe changing the uh, the size, zooming in. Kind of messed with it. But, yep, as we would expect here, we see that these are both open. And now, also, because of the port, it's assuming, Nmap is assuming this is the service that corresponds to it. So, in, in reality, that's not the case, right? It's just a Netcat session. It's not actually HTTP. This is not actually SSH. But that is the prediction that it made just because of the port number. But, you know, in, in the real world, it would probably correspond to these services. But just something I want to point out. Now, here they're both open. Now, what we can actually do is we can apply an IP tables rule, IP tables rule to actually drop and thus firewall off one of these ports. Let's say, for example, we want to firewall off port 80. What we could do is go back into here, and instead, we can... Well, here, here we were doing multi-port, so instead... Oops. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the multi-port part. We're just going to open up port 22. We're actually going to tell it to drop anything on port 80. So I'm going to enable this rule up here. So now what's going on is there's a couple rules at play. Let's just break this down, right? IP tables dash A. Here uh, is the output. So we're saying that this actually might be incorrect here. I just noticed this is actually let's see here that means yeah anything that's uh, output over tcp to port 80 we're gonna drop that and here anything that's coming into port 22 accept all right and then we'll accept uh outgoing tcp requests so with with these rules here we will save it and notice we didn't change anything here. We still have these sessions running. So the next thing we're going to try to do, we're going to run this script first to apply. And then we're going to try and scan these again and see what results we might get back. 
So if we did everything correctly, we should see that it firewalling out port 80, but we're able to connect to 22 still. It shows us open. So, yep, we see some errors come out here, but 22 is still open, right? And Nmap is so gracious as to give us some, a little bit extra information here. You can see uh, some operation not permitted, offending packet, and you see it shows us filtered here on port 80 and open on 22. So how do we get around this? Well, we can try some other ways. Uh, we can actually, a lot of times if you want to do some kind of recon here to see what's filtered, what's not, another thing can do is a, uh, an axe scan. In this case, our, the regular scan that we did, the, uh, connection list, the, the one that doesn't complete the three-way handshake, I think a stealth scan is what Nmap defaults to. The stealth scan gave us enough information, really. We know this is filtered and not closed. And we know that this is open, right? So it did its job, but this is another way you can do it. You can do an ax scan, and you'll see what's filtered, what's not filtered. So that's another technique to add to your tool belt there when it comes to just identifying if a firewall might be at play or not. Now, as far as actually evading it or spoofing, there is a number of things. Let me just make this a little bit easier. I'm going to pull up the Nmap site and I'll, I'll kind of walk you through what some of the different techniques are and in what situations uh, they work. So we go to nmap.org here, bypass firewalls, IDS. If it will load. I mean, Foxy Proxy is not running, but not sure what's going on here. Hopefully we can open it. If not, maybe in from my host system let me actually try that right now okay not sure what's going on there oh i know what's going on there it's the uh the firewall rule we put in place port 80 we're not able to actually use the internet because of that so yeah that's pretty interesting yeah if you firewall uh, port 80 then yeah you can't really use uh the the, the web I, I figured i didn't figure that would happen i figured it would use 443 but uh Apparently, that did break some stuff, and I think it's because of that firewall rule. Pretty interesting. But, uh, yeah, this is what I wanted to pull up. Now, I know this is crazy small. Um, this is not the most responsive-looking website. But, yeah, hopefully this is large enough for you guys. Well, let's just get right down to it. You can fragment your packets using the dash F option. Now, keep in mind, these are all Nmap flags, by the way. So this is what you do in Nmap, right? You can actually specify an MTU. And, uh, yeah, you can adjust, like, how much you want to fragment it, like how many bytes per fragment. And sometimes doing that will actually allow you to bypass some of the firewalls that are not very strongly configured. Um, you can read more here as well. So, yeah, keep in mind you have to do this with the raw packet features as well. Which, I mean, you, you should be good on that as long as you're running. Especially, you, anytime you run these nmap commands, you want to make sure you're running them as root as well, by the way. You can create decoys, which is pretty interesting, right? So, this is more of a stealth thing than anything else. Uh, because that way, like, they can't tell. Like, the, the target system is not really able to tell which IP address is coming from. Now, this can be handy if there is an IP tables rule or some other kind of firewall rule, uh, whatever the admins are using for the firewalls. Uh, if there's a firewall rule to block a certain IP address from accessing uh, a port or accessing anything at all, a decoy scan can sometimes be a way you could use to bypass it because it won't be able to detect that that restricted IP address is making the request. They won't be able to tell which IP is actually making it. And uh, you can also just straight up spoof your source address. So if there's a firewall rule that says a certain source address, again, you know, is not a, is not allowed to access something, well, then you can just spoof to another source address. And if that's, if that's the only rule they have in place, then you can, at that point, access the, uh, the service. And, uh, 
this one here, you can, <clears throat> Nmap should be able to detect this automatically, but it will tell you if not. So it tells Nmap what interface to send and receive packets on, right? So <clears throat> there's, a, there's a way with IP tables as well is you can restrict the interface. You can restrict to a certain interface. Uh, you can, for example, block the port only on one interface but not another interface. And uh, this can allow you to tell it which one you want to use. And uh, yeah, so as you saw here, the source port, destination port, all that stuff, you can actually change that as well. And pretty much spoofing port numbers, right? If you want to cho choose which source port. Now, what that is, it's typically an ephemeral port, I believe is the, uh, the technical term for it. So when, well, I'll just show you, right? It, when, if we go back to here, when it said offending packet, right? You see this and you're like, what, well, what port is that? What does that have to do with anything? This is actually the source port from my box and it's kind of chosen at random, but you can actually spoof this as well. And in the case of an IP table rule or firewall rule that's restricting a certain source port, you can get around it by spoofing it in that way. And as you see, there's all kinds of different options here. I'm not going to go through all of them. But uh, down here, you have some of the more niche ones, advanced ones. Deprecated Adler 32 algorithm. I've never used this before. But yeah, a lot to explore here, most certainly. Um, this one's kind of interesting. Ask Nmap to use valid TCP UDP. SCTP checksum for packets to target hosts. Since virtually all host IP stacks properly drop these packets, any response received are likely coming from a firewall or IDS. So this is more of like a, hey, let's, uh, let's detect for sure. Is it the firewall in my way? What's in my way, right? And of course, you can always proxy, try to proxy your connections. You can do that straight from Nmap. Pretty nice feature if you didn't know already. And, you know, if you need to spoof a MAC address, something like that, just TTL, randomize the host order. You can do all that stuff and more here. So hopefully that was a good primer to all this. I mean, definitely there's more in depth that we could go with this as well. But I think this gives a lot of people a solid understanding of what is uh, what is at play here. How the what it looks like on the admin end now IP tables is uh, for Linux systems you know Windows has their own way of doing this but you get the idea it's pretty much the same concept uh, so hopefully this video was of help to you guys if so be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already hit the like button as well to get this message out there and if you are really eager to get into some more content check out my playlist what you need to know for OSCP videos are on the screen now and I will see you guys right over there thanks for watching.